Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Simply Nerdy. Uh, this is Anthony hosting today, and I'm joined by Stephen and Lisa. Hello! And uh, today, what we wanted to talk about were our impressions of uh, what we've played of Xenoblade 3 so far. Stephen, I will say, he has not purchased it yet, but he has seen me play it, and he can tell about uh, tell you all what that did for him. <laughs> um, I've... I've clocked a good healthy amount of hours now and I, I have a pretty good sense of what I feel about it. And anyway, uh, uh, we, we just wanted to kind of give our early impressions of what we uh, are thinking of the game so far. Maybe I'll let you guys start since I probably have uh, mountains of things to say. <laughs> let me start just by apologizing to the Simply Nerdy community just because we did have a video up for a live stream I was unable to get the hardware to function, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, that, that kind of fell through. But yeah. as and a result of that... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, we, we really were there on time. Uh, we For some reason, it just wouldn't record and cast to the TV at the same time. So anytime the, the recording or the live stream started, I would lose the signal. And so I'm like, oh, well... This video has Anthony playing. This is Anthony. Okay. This, this is footage that you would have seen from the live stream, but it was recorded because we couldn't live stream. But yeah, so going going back to what Anthony said, yeah, I was so I watched Anthony. Live stream didn't work, but I still watched, and I actually had a great time. Like I'm not a traditional JRPG fan, as you all know, and I like to give the rest of the Simply Nerdy panel crap for liking JRPGs. <laughs> but uh, I legit I, I legit had a great time. And but before Anthony even left for the for the night, I redownloaded uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, which I do own. Uh, I started redownloading it and since then I have started playing it again and I'm having a lot more fun this uh, second time or I guess this will be my third time. My third time around <laughs> than my first time. <laughs> So anyway, I'm having a yeah. Third it's been very distracting. Charm, right? Third time's a charm, yeah. and uh, no, it's it's been a, it's been a blast. So, and this this third uh, entry in the series, oh man, like it looks like they polished a lot, and the gameplay was solid. The visuals were solid. I was impressed with the entire thing. Yeah, I was really I was really pleased. I was sitting here being like, well, if the live stream didn't work, at least it's really cool that it seems to have made a believer out of Steven. <laughs> <laughs> and you heard it here first. <laughs> so the first thing that, like, when I first started, I actually felt like the tutorial had really good pacing. I felt like they did a good job with, like, the battle tutorial specifically. Um, I have to say that, like, as somebody who has played other Xenoblade entries, that, like... Like, the fact that the first battle was just like, this is how you auto-attack. And then, like, it had you do it for the whole time. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm ready. That was, that was for... I was like, you should have only done, like, one enemy for that or something. I was like, give me my arts. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that part, but, so I can't But comment. to be honest, yeah. for, for somebody who isn't used to Xenoblade stuff, the fact that they were introducing it a concept at a time when it's such a, like, thick battle system... I thought, you know, it's probably it's probably good. The other thing that kind of annoyed me was the fact that they still haven't told me how I'm supposed to tell which enemies will attack me why. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they did the Xenoblade 2 philosophy behind that again, because I remember them uh, making a big point of being like, you're just going to have to learn. I'm over a dozen hours in. We're recording this the day after it released, so I played a lot. Anyway. <laughs> um, but I haven't seen anything that, that tells which ones will aggro you. I've, I've just kind of learned to memorize, like, oh, brogs definitely aggro you versus, you know, those, like, bunny sheep things. They don't. You know, you just kind of learn it. <laughs> Everything is very red now. Like, when you're... <laughs> When I was in a battle, it was like everything was red. The HUD was red. Days topple or, or break topple days all was red. That's a that's a nitpick right there. The other thing, so I really like so far the AOE buffs where it, it has an area of effect. And if you want the buff, you go into that area. Yes, it is like not as 
convenient as a buff where it's like, no, you have attack up and it's on you. I kind of like the fact that it's like, oh, this area has attack up. So if you want to attack up, you're going to have to figure out how to be in that area and still be where you want to be in relation to the enemy. And I was like, oh, I kind of like that. I, I think it's a very cool, uh, it, it kind of forces you to be a lot more tactical. Um, yeah. Those buff zones are actually some of the most important arts in the game from my experience so far. So I've been playing on hard mode because, because of course, I don't know. Because I, I he's like crazy. A, I like a challenge. And it Too much been, of a challenge. It has been delightful. I'll have yes. lots to say about that. Those, those arts saved my bacon, especially there's one in particular that creates an evasion up zone that oh. has that has saved me from imminent death several times. So yeah. I don't know, it just, it feels really cool. Um, and you just feel really tactical about it and you have to be really strategic about where you place them. And something that's really helpful too, you know, so I, I like to play as healers a lot I've found because they kind of are the MVPs. If if all of your here, if all of your here, <laughs> hearers, you heard all of your healers. Uh, <laughs> you healed it here first. And, oh, oh! <laughs> you did heal it here first. Oh no! <laughs> all right, that's my new that. thing. Whenever we talk about JRPGs, now you healed it here first. <laughs> <laughs> if all of your healers faint, you basically can kiss that battle goodbye. Because um, only healers can revive people. And, uh, and so you don't have a way to revive your fallen party members as soon as they're all gone. That was my complaint! Because <laughs> because I, was, I decided, you know, I'll try hard. Like, I've played enough Xenoblade that I could probably play hard mode. And so I was, like, fighting, like, three bugs that were around my level. And two of my people died. And I was like... Man, I sure hope that they tell me how to revive people eventually before my whole party dies. Now I understand <laughs> why I the, the one didn't tell me anything because the healer was dead. <laughs> that was hilarious. But luckily, we didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 nice thing though is that um, I don't know. Like I mean, it just creates a bit more strategic risk feel to it because. If everyone could do it, then, you know, the healers would just be kind of relegated to, oh, they're just, you know, the boring class that you leave to the AI. Uh, they're, they're necessary, but they're annoying. Just the mere fact that they're the only ones who can who can revive party members suddenly makes them the, the most valuable party members. And uh, yeah, there, MVP? Yeah. <laughs> there are, there, yeah, there are several battles where all of my characters were taking turns pa uh, dying. But because I was controlling the healer and I had my fellow AI helping me out, we were just kept on getting them back up, just kept on going. So here's the thing. I feel like I pref like I already said that I think I prefer the timer. But also when it comes to just like usage in battle, I feel like I still prefer the timer because then, you know, I, it, the thing with auto attacks is that you have to be standing still for them to occur. And so any time you take in positioning is time that you're not auto-attacking. The thing about Kvesi Arts is that even if you're not auto-attacking because you're positioning and you, you know, keep repositioning and, can't, and accidentally canceling your normal attacks, you'll still get your arts to come back because they're on a timer. But then if you do that same stuff with, uh, with Agnes Arts, and you're like repositioning and making it so that you're not doing as many normal attacks that will actually take longer. And I don't like that idea. I don't. The differences in styles between Keves and Agnes Arts. Uh, what I was going to say is I feel like they've, they've actually found a really good balance. They, I feel like they did a really good job of making each one have pros and cons to it. Um, as you pointed out, Kevesi Arts, the nice thing about them is that they're always refilling regardless of what you're doing. That's nice. But if you don't have anything else to do, it does kind of feel like you're being pretty passive until they come back. On the other hand, there's the Agnes Arts. Uh, like you said, you have to be uh, worrying more about, uh, you know, about how many auto attacks you're doing in a given time frame. The thing that makes them kind of unique and, and cool though, is for Agnes Arts, anytime you do, uh, you cancel into an art, it gives mm -hmm. them a boost to their charge. Art canceling for Agnes Arts actually makes them recharge faster. 
Okay, so it um, becomes especially important for Agnes classes. Yes, yes. Yeah, no, Agnes is actually really, really good, but the reason why I feel like they're they're still really balanced, because I know a lot of people have said Ag Agnes arts just feel a little bit more interactive, and I can mm. see where they're coming from, but I think the reason why I'm kind of appreciative that there's actually the two systems co cooperating with each other is that one of the weaknesses I noticed with Agnes arts is that, of course, not only does it require you to be auto-attacking, but if you miss, it does not charge anything. So you're at the mercy of your your accuracy on the enemy's evasion. So sometimes it can actually be slower, you know? So it, it's kind of a trade-off. And I just think it's cool that you have both options, you know, like you have your Kavesi arts that, you know, are recharging on a, a, you know, a predictable timer. And then you have your Agnes arts that you can also do on the side. And, uh, and it gets even cooler once you start unlocking master arts. Um, and this, this one is going to make Anthony grumpy. I don't like what I've seen of the graphics so far. Not because they, not because they look, they don't look fancy enough for me, but because they're hard to look at. And what I mean by that is they look over rendered. I don't know. So Anthony, you know how I've complained about how Twilight Princess, it's hard for me to see what's going on in Twilight Princess because of the way the graphics are and the way the colors are? This also. <laughs> huh. Like, like I can't understand the terrain sometimes because of the way that they rendered it. And I'm like, what am I looking at? Well, that's, that's interesting. I, uh, I've, my personal impressions is that it's pretty comparable to Definitive Edition, so... Once again, it's not like, a, the graphics aren't pretty enough, so I don't like it. It's, a they did something in the way they rendered this, and so I don't like it as much as a game that hypothetically has the same or worse graphics. Hmm. Anthony's offended. No, I'm not offended. I just, I have a different opinion is all. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I can't explain it to you guys. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why I can't explain, but I, I don't know. All I can come up with is it, it, the, the only thing I can come up with that kind of like lays it all out, what my opinion is about the graphics, is over-rendered. And I don't, I don't even know what I mean by that. So, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> like, like... The edges of grass and people and things look choppy. Because they're over-rendered. I don't know. Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop stabbing myself on this hill that I'm trying to die on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're funny. That was all my notes. That! That is Anthony politeness for... You're very wrong, but I'll be <laughs> nice about it. <laughs> no. You're here first. Just again, I just have a different opinion, is all. Uh, okay, so it's my turn then. Who are you? Sorry, what? What? Um, okay, well, so... Oh. Here huh? we go. Here we go. <laughs> hold on to your... Hold on to your hats. Lisa's a goob. <laughs> um, so... I guess I would start my impressions by saying third time's the charm. I think that's a really good way of describing my impressions of this game. I I mean, honestly, I was I was chatting with my wife about it the other day and, and I, I told her quite honestly, after seeing all of the trailers and the reviews and everything, I was pretty optimistic that this game would be comparable at least in quality to Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, which for me is my, my second favorite game ever made. And it, it is my number one favorite JRPG, um, you know, so I was, I was really hopeful that Xenoblade 3 would, would at least match that. What I was surprised to find is that I feel like it's kind of almost put it to shame. And, you know, that's a little bit hyperbole there, but I am honestly blown away just how refined they took all of those systems from Xenoblade 1 and Xenoblade 2 and just meshed them into the perfect system. Or, or ba basically, I mean, that's obviously an opinion, but it's it's almost perfect in my mind. I really feel like they've they've really captured 
the feel of the original game. I, I, the, the thing I loved about Xenoblade 1 so much is that it felt like it was a very serious story with a very serious narrative that, that had rewarding characters and rewarding payoffs that made me care. And, and I feel like they've, they've taken that to the next level in Xenoblade 3. The, the story starts off gripping. I want to know what the heck's going on. And they make it so compelling and the characterization so solid that I just can't help but, but fall in love with it. And honestly, um, I think one of the, the strongest things about Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition is, is its characterization, its, um, its voice acting, things like that. But I almost feel like Xenoblade 3 is outdoing even that aspect of Xenoblade 1. And, and again, remember, I'm talking about what at least here to 4 has been my second favorite game ever made. Uh, I just, the characters are so lifelike to me. I mean, not, not in how they're, you know, they look graphically, but in how they feel like real people um, living in this different world, you know, that's so different from ours. And their motivations make sense, and their interactions make sense, and, you know, their animosities and their friendships. It's just, it's really believable, and I love it. And honestly, so far, this story is just blowing me away. And I don't even know very much about the overall plot yet, but the, the narrative is strong as heck. I am not even kidding. It's so good. Um, so I'm really, really enjoying that aspect. Um, <clears throat> Another one of the, the big things that, you know, I always have to include in a review of a Xenoblade game is my feelings on the music. And I think they just have absolutely nailed it. With The music with is so phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Every battle that you encountered during your quote unquote live stream or recording session, it, they were fantastic tracks. Uh-huh. And, and they get better and better and better. And, 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 you know, something else that I thought was really cool, too. That I really liked. I've noticed that there's a lot more of a tendency for somber area themes compared to past games because I feel like most of the previous games including Xenoblade 1 kind of focused on making a very adventure feeling song for basically every area and it would just kind of have a different flavor to it but there's some areas here where it it's just you know this very nice calming song and and, and i i find myself surprised like this is working really well like it really gives me a different feel entirely for this area and it just makes it feel like a, a fresh a, a freshening aspect to my exploration experience like they have basically a, a whole slew of different genres they're re representing and all of them fit and all of them are really well done i I, the, the epic moments are, you know, blood pumping and the somber ones are, you know, like they're heart-wrenching. You, you just feel the emotions being conveyed by the characters through the music as well. Uh, you know, and the, the calm moments, I don't know, they just, so far, I'm not very far into the game, but so far it's been absolutely phenomenal. And uh, that's coming from a series whose pedigree is all, already pretty darn solid. But I've been saying for a while, ever since we first started getting some of the details about the combat system, that I could see this being one of the best combat systems ever designed. And after having over a dozen hours with it, I can safely say that in my opinion, this is the most enjoyable battle system I have ever experienced in any game ever made. Yeah, it, it, it takes a bit for it to all click, but for my, from my perspective, it's not because it's overly complicated. It's just that, you know, they, they introduce it to you step by step. They, they drip feed it to you. So there's certain things you le legitimately can't use until they introduce it. So it, in that sense, the battle system can sometimes, it might, it might seem to some to take a while to ramp up, but, uh, but it allows you to kind of master each aspect of it before you get to the next. And then you know exactly how to put it all together. I guess I'll just talk about my experience with the combat system after basically everything has been introduced. Um, so you have access to all of your party members, you have access to class changes, you have access to, to character switching mid-battle, um, you have the Ouroboros transformations, and you have access to chain attacks. Like all of these things uh, kind of are introduced piece by piece as you go through the first chapter or, you know, or, or two. I, I don't remember, I wasn't keeping track of where it's taught chapter wise but Anthony uh, was having way too much fun to keep track of that 
I yeah, exactly exactly. Um, <laughs> but uh, the the way each of those systems slots into one another is is incredibly fluid in a way that neither Xenoblade One or Two accomplished, in in my opinion. Um, one of the things I've I've held as a complaint against uh, about Xenoblade 2 for a while in terms of the combat system is that I felt like sometimes it was hard to lead from one layer into the next. And I felt like sometimes it was, it just felt a little clunky to try and get everything to work. And uh, in Xenoblade 1, I, I, I preferred, I think overall the battle system more specifically because of that opinion of Xenoblade 2, but it's probably also the most simplistic out of, out of the mainline games. And, uh, and so, I think what I love so much about Xenoblade 3 is that it took the, I guess, the greater approachability of the first game's mechanics and merged it with the complexity of the second in a way that just works. It just really works. And uh, um, I, I mean, I, I, I probably can't say too much without without spoilers, but the, the amount of tactical options that you can, mix-ups you can do in a given battle is it just absolutely mind-boggling in it and it's so i mean I, I know some people would probably find that intimidating and that's maybe one of the reasons why you know they're intimidated by the game but when you when you take the time to learn each system and how they they interface and then you just think critically about okay here's what i can do with this it really starts to shine this game just really starts to shine especially on hard mode you know okay so one of the things i have to say um, one of my concerns going into this game was I was a little bit worried that with a six to seven party member system, uh, you would be carried mostly by your, your AI and you wouldn't really have to do a, a lot to win a battle. You know, I mean, it, it, it would have been something easy to do wrong if they hadn't find, found the right balance, but that is so not the case, at least on hard mode. I haven't played it in any other mode, but, uh, you, you have to be really strategizing throughout the, the, the battles to, to survive. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I, I, I love it so much. It's, oh, and then chain attacks. Oh my heavens. So chain attacks are, I feel like the best that they have ever been. Like it's, that's I think probably the most improved aspect of this game's combat systems compared to the previous games. The chain attacks are absolute fire. Um, it, it's incredible because, I mean, it, it's, it, it looks complicated getting into it and I'm not gonna try and break it down here. You know, I'll, I'll save that for my combat series if I make it. <laughs> if, if you make it, when? I'll, okay, when? Sometime, I don't know. I'm gonna beat the game first. <laughs> anyway. I didn't know if I could expect to have Xenoblade 1 dethroned for me personally, but I think it already has been, and I'm not even much more than a dozen hours in. It's it's an incredible game. I think it's a it's a landmark piece in the you know the history of the JRP genre, JRPG genre, and I think it's extremely worth all of your time to give it a, a try. It's incredible. Anyway, I think that's that probably concludes our thoughts and impressions here. We're, uh, I mean, I, I, Lisa has yet to get particularly far. She hasn't experienced all the combat systems, and uh, and Stephen has been largely a, a a person watching the experience so far. But uh, but needless to say, uh, we'll have more to say later. So thank you for listening to our impressions video, um, and please share your own impressions if you've played it, or you know just share your thoughts on. Uh, you know, what other people's opinions have kind of made you think about playing it if you haven't picked it up yet. Um, I, if you've been uh, converted to JRPGs, like maybe myself. Like maybe Steven, yeah! Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> We've been working on him for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, just let us know your thoughts. And uh, please, if you, if you like our videos, please consider uh, liking and subscribing. Uh, it, it really helps us out and... Uh, um, tells us also what you enjoy most so that we know what to make more of. <laughs> but um, yeah, we, we appreciate you listening to us and sticking with us and uh, hope you enjoyed this. And uh, I guess until next time, keep it nerdy. nerdy.